Our worship begins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and in the power of the community of the Holy Spirit that binds us together as a people of faith. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, you give your Son as the vine apart from whom we cannot live. Nourish our life in his resurrection, that we may bear the fruit of love and know the fullness of your joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from the eighth chapter of Acts. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the pasture, the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter and like a lamb silent before its shearer. So he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, About whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. Word of God, word of life. The psalm reading is from Psalm 22. From you comes my praise in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the sight of those who fear the Lord. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Let those who seek the Lord give praise. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of nations shall bow before God. 
for dominion belongs to the Lord who rules over the nations. Indeed, all who sleep in the earth shall bow down and worship. All who go down to the dust, though they be dead, shall kneel before the Lord. Their descendants shall serve the Lord, whom they shall proclaim to generations to come. They shall proclaim God's deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying to them, The Lord has acted. There's revival and it's spreading Like a wildfire in my soul Sunday morning, hallelujah And it's lasting all week long Can you hear it? Can you feel it? It's the rhythm of the gospel song Once you choose it The second reading is from the fourth chapter of 1 John. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God and they abide in God. So we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. 
There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from them is this, those who love God must love their neighbors and sisters also. Word of God, word of life. Good morning. So Squiggles and I are here ready for Spark Bible reading time. And we're going to be uh, reading a story on page 510. And it's called Philip and the Ethiopian. And here's our picture. There's Squiggles down in the bottom. And let's see what our story has to say today. Philip loved Jesus. He tried to act like Jesus would. Every day, Philip fed people who were poor and helped people who were sick. One day, God sent Philip an angel. The angel told Philip to travel on a hot, dry road and share God's love along the way. So Philip set out along the road. It sure is hot and dry out, thought Philip. Then Philip looked up and was surprised. He saw a man from Ethiopia sitting in a chariot and reading a scroll. One of the horses was tired, so the chariot had stopped. Okay, let's see what's on the next page. Philip knew he had a chance to do the job God had given him. He ran up to the chariot and he said, hello. The man invited him to sit next to him. I see you're reading a scroll, Philip said. Yes, it's a scroll with words of the prophet Isaiah, but I don't really understand it. The Ethiopian man said, the Ethiopian man said, they took turns reading the scroll out loud. Philip talked about Jesus and explained what the scroll said. Soon the horse felt rested and ready to trot. Philip staying in the chariot. It was a bouncy ride. The man from Ethiopia bumped into Philip and he said, Tell me more about Jesus. Philip told him, Jesus was the son of God. He came to earth to save us. The Ethiopian man was so amazed that he wanted to be baptized. But, there could, but where could they find some water for baptism on that hot and dry road? The surprise, the, the, excuse me, the surprises just kept on coming that day. Philip and the man found a pool of water. Philip baptized the man, and God's love filled the man's heart. The man told Philip that he would share the good news about Jesus with everyone. Philip was happy to serve God. And there's a little activity at the bottom that says, what would you say if somebody asked you the question that the Ethiopian man asked Philip? Who is Jesus? What would your answer be? Let's talk a little bit more about that in our children's message coming right up. So as a pastor, I get asked that question a lot. Who is Jesus? And there's a lot of different answers to that question. In our gospel lesson for today that uh, we read earlier, we heard that, uh, no, in fact, the gospel lesson is going to be read in just a minute. In our gospel lesson that we're going to read in just a minute, we're going to read that Jesus says, I am the vine. And uh, last week we talked about Jesus being the good shepherd and a couple of weeks before that, we talked about Jesus being the gatekeeper. And there's a lot of different ways Jesus identifies himself. And so when we start talking about who Jesus is, that can be a really tough question to answer. And all of us will have different answers. Even you. Isn't that exciting? You know who Jesus is. You know a little bit about Jesus. And you have the ability to share that with other people as well. You know, sometimes when we read the Bible, we think that all these people in the Bible are really, really old people. But there's a lot of people who think Philip was quite young, that Philip might have still only been a teenager, not much older than you. And so if Philip could share God's love and talk about who Jesus is, you know what? You too can share God's love and talk about who Jesus is. You have a very special ministry in our congregation. 
You have a very special part of who we are as a community of faith. When you come to worship and, and when you watch these videos and when you participate in the life of our community, you give us all an opportunity to see Jesus alive in you. And then when we start talking about who Jesus is, we can say, Jesus is seen in the little ones in our congregation and in the big ones in our congregation and in the young ones in our congregation. And Jesus is seen in the old ones in our congregation. Who is Jesus? That's a very big question. And we all together talk about what that answer means to us. And we all together make up a definition of what Jesus is, who Jesus is, and what Jesus means to us. That's an exciting part of being part of a community of faith. Amen. The Gospel reading, according to John, the 15th chapter. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. God removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, God prunes and makes it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me, just as I abide in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are, are gathered up and thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my word abides in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. This is our gospel reading. When I was a child, I had a hard time getting a hold of the, of the whole reading thing. I had a difficult time, you know, putting it all together. Then came the most amazing teacher, Mrs. Berg. Mrs. Berg had developed her own phonics program that made all the difference for me. Before long, she had me reading like crazy. There's a great saying in the Talmud that says, the one who knows A and B must teach the one who only knows A. This means that we have an obligation to teach each other the things that we know. And this is the crux of our religious life. Jesus came. Jesus taught the disciples. The disciples spread the message. And we are here because someone taught us about God. Very seldom does faith in God come from a vacuum. Which brings us to the Ethiopian eunuch. This person was a very high-ranking official, and these jobs were often given to eunuchs to protect the virtue of the female in their charge. We see this eunuch was the treasurer of the Candace, the leader of all Ethiopia. The Candace was a female ruler. It was a title very much like queen. In today's world, the eunuch would be more likely considered a part of the LGBTQIA community. They were not viewed as male. They were not viewed as female. In most instances, they were viewed as having no gender at all. But yet, this person, while on a trip to Jerusalem, we're assuming with the boss, acquires a copy of the book of Isaiah. Now, this was a, a common occurrence in biblical times. Uh, the Jewish leadership in Jerusalem would very often pre have presented the Candace with a copy of a book of the Bible as a gift. This Ethiopian eunuch, who the author does not even care to name, now has this copy of the book of Isaiah in their hands. And what is more, they're reading it. Now this leaves me with a lot of questions. How did this person learn how to read? 
If they're able to read, why are they such a lowly servant? How did they become a eunuch? Were they born that way? Had they been made a eunuch at some point in their life? Where was the Candace at this point? As a reader, I wanted to know these things. And just then, the author of the book of Acts looks at me and says, Stop ruining a good story. I have something I want to communicate to you, and this is what it is. And I realized that I was stopped by my own prejudices. I often wonder now as I look at that story if I would react differently if I had known the answers to some of these questions. Would it affect the way that I would interact with this story and with the Ethiopian eunuch? I worry in today's day and age that this person would simply have been discarded by most of Christianity. They would have been ignored and left in their ignorance of the words of Isaiah. When I see how people treat store clerks and cleaning people, police, members of the LGBTQIA plus community, blacks, browns, Asians, and man, that list could go on and on in this world. I realize that this person could very easily have been ignored. But Philip does not concern himself with any of these questions. He sees a person desperately seeking God and he wants to help. So he stops what he's doing. And what he does next always amazes me. He spends time with him. I mean, the story happens pretty fast, just a few short verses. But as a person who has ever tried to explain scripture with people, I can assure you that this conversation went on for quite a while. Philip took the time to teach, to get to know and to minister to this individual. And in the end, this person, this Ethiopian eunuch became a baptized member of the community of faith. What does that mean? That means they are now my siblings in the body of Christ. They are my ancestors in the faith. In the words of Jesus, we are one as God the Creator and God the Son are one. This is the amazing part about spending time with people. It tears down barriers and it makes us one. Mrs. Berg spent time with me, teaching me how to read. I will never forget Mrs. Berg and what she has given me. As I am sure the Ethiopian eunuch will never forget Philip and the time that they spent together. And I'm certain in your own minds, you're currently recounting all the people who have spent time with you, teaching you things and bringing you into a family or a cluster of sorts. So what does this all mean for us? As we come out of COVID, we have a very new congregation. Some of our family have moved, some of our family have passed, and some of our family just really like worshiping in their PJs. Whatever the case may be, Grace Lutheran Church will look different. And as the weeks move on and more and more people begin to re-enter life, Some may be renewed with a sense of joy and an excitement to learn more about God. And they may be led to this place. Our congregation will be faced with a new and exciting mission to reach out to our community with the love and the grace of God that has bound us together during these last couple of months. But in order for us to have an impact on these people and our community, We have to be like Philip, and we have to be willing to spend time with the outcast, the left outs, and the forgotten. The gift that this congregation is, is too great to keep to ourselves. We need to get off of our chariots and open the book with others and grow in our faith and life as well. Who knows? After this story, how the, we don't know how the eunuch changed in their life back in Ethiopia. We have no clue who came to faith because that person took time 
to talk to them and get to know them and to grow with another human being. It's time. Our community and our world needs healing. And the only way we can do this is by spending time with each other and others in the word, in our world, and in the love and the grace of God. Let us go forth like Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch and spend time with others and share the gospel and grow the excitement of faith that comes from being a baptized member of the community of God. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring now our prayers before God who promises to hear us and to answer in steadfast love. God of all faithfulness, you abide in your church and your church abides in you. Cleanse us by the power of your word and give yourself to the whole church on earth so that it bears fruit and witnesses to your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You have created the heavens and the earth. As we wonder at the beauty of creation, may we seek vital connections among all that depends on the earth for life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You rule the nations with justice and love. Give the leaders of the earth assurance of your abiding presence that they lead not by fear, but with love for those they are called to serve. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You have loved us so that we can love others. We pray for all in need of your love. Those who are poor, lowly, outcast, weak, or fearful. Provide for the needs of all. We pray especially for Maggie, Joan, Verna, Kim, Shirley, Arletta, Joe, Don Mark, Dana, John, 
Rowene, Hildegard, Jane, Alice, Lana, Sandy, Sagan, George, Cindy, Dick, Charlie, Trina, and those we now name silently in our hearts and in our homes. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You gather us with all the saints by the power of your Spirit. With them, may our hearts live forever in your keeping. Lord, in your mercy. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Adonai bless you and keep you. Adonai's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Adonai's countenance be lifted upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Sovereign, the Savior, and the Spirit. Amen. Let's go forth in peace. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you.